two girls can do anything to show that encourages ladies to just give it a crack. Today we're talking about cutting in when we're painting. It's my pet hate. Painting is such an easy, cheap way to do a, redo a room, uh, particularly if you don't have some money, you know, a tub of paint for a hundred or a couple hundred bucks and you can redo your whole room. But if you don't do your cutting in well, it looks messy and uh, just not very nice. You can make it look really professional if you just take your time and I'll show you some tricks. This is what I'm talking about. This is my pet hate. You can see there, I think they've probably used some tape to try and do it and as they've peeled it off and then up underneath here, you can see purple paint goes up under the cornice. You can see along here, all the way along, there's a gap where the you can still see the white and then the purple doesn't join right up. It's more terrible cutting in. So this is a shocking paint all over the cornice for the ceiling. It's awful. All right, so now we're ready to uh, cut in. We've done done our ceiling. You can see I've just done it messily there because we're going to cut up. Now this is important if you're doing a different color. We're doing white, so it's not as big a deal. But if you're doing a different colored wall, you really need to be cutting in really neatly or you're going to have that mess like I showed you um, with the previous paint job. There's a few ways of cutting in. Um, you could either use masking tape and mask it all up. For one, it's an extra cost. Two, you can have bleed underneath, so if, if you haven't stuck it on properly, it'll get in underneath it. Or even when you go to peel it off, you might peel off paint on the other surface. So you don't want that. This is a, a little tool I had years ago. I don't like them, but I'm going to show you it because you might come across it. It's for cutting in along, along there. You basically it's almost like a roller kind of thing. You dip it in your paint and then you get it here and you run it along your edge. The issue is if you get any paint on the, on the other parts, like on this roller part, then you're going to have a streak along there. Um, and you will get like a streak line kind of thing. It's If you're really not confident in your ability, this might do the trick for you, but I certainly don't love it. That's a pretty old one. So the best thing to do is to learn how to cut in properly without the need of any aids. Now any uh, professional painter, you, they won't be taping up and stuff like that. They'll just be doing it by hand. So the tr best thing to do is get a half decent quality paintbrush, okay? Um, again, it doesn't have to be the best one, but something with nice fine bristles that you have a bit of control over. And the best thing is rather than trying to go that way with your paintbrush, you turn it this way, right? And you fan it out. Okay, make sure there's not too much paint on there, but you just fan it out neatly. And you just kind of glide along your area there. And you can see if you kind of come up underneath, you can see that there's, you're just gliding along underneath it, just ever so slightly touching it. And you, you'll get pretty good at it and you'll be able to do it pretty quickly. Right, and then you just kind of go along and then that's ready to roller up to uh, and you would roller kind of up as close as you can without touching that other part. All right, so we'll do it again here. I'll show you again. I'll get a bit of, bit of paint there, fan out my brush and just glide along. It's not the best to show you with a white on white, but um, the technique is the same. Just to show it again here where we've got an actual colour difference. If we, I'm just going to cut in down this side part here. Just straight down. A nice even line. Right. There you go, you've got nice even cut in, no need for tape, perfect.